I am the wife of a corn addict, and it destroyed me. Corn is not some innocent pastime. Corn isn't something that doesn't hurt those we love. Corn is destructive, to yourself and to those that love you. I used to be confident, self-assured, had pride in myself, and loved myself. Now, nearly six years later, I'm a shell of the person I used to be, because of my husband's corn addiction. I watched, year after year, my husband ogle other women, right in front of me, literally fantasizing about effing these women, while sitting right next to me holding my hand. I learned how time after time, my husband preferred to sit in some dirty, nasty public bathroom, for God only knows how long, watching God only knows what, and jerking off, to the point of injury, instead of coming home and making love to his willing and waiting wife. I now know that during our lovemaking, all my husband thinks about are nameless women, and is effing them in his head, and just using my body as a means of doing this. There's more, so much more, but it hurts too much to talk about it. I had caught him, a few times, he rationalized his behavior, promised to stop, and told me he had, for years. Now I found out, it's never stopped, not once. He's been lying to me for years, and now, finally, when he's literally destroyed the person who loved him more than life itself, he's ready to change. Why did his recovery have to come at my expense? Why did his willingness to finally get help and admit to what he's been doing to me all the years, have to happen when I've reached rock bottom? And now, I'm supposed to continue to support him, to make it easier for him so he doesn't relapse, be kind and sweet and not talk about it with him, so that he can continue to succeed. While I watch him take quick peeks at bikini girls on TV, or quick glances at young girls in tight yoga pants at the store. I'm supposed to make it easier for him, when I no longer want to live, when I don't sleep, when I hurt myself to take away the inner pain my husband's addiction has caused me. So, for those of you that think this is harmless, you are dead wrong. If you think that by hiding it makes it okay, you are wrong. I would never had married him had I known he had any addiction, drugs, alcohol, gambling, or sex. I had the right to know about it, I had the right to know what I was marrying into, to make that decision for myself if I could accept it, but that choice was taken away from me. For the sake of your loved ones, be honest, from the beginning, don't take away their right to decide. Because for me, at this point, it's a matter of my own life or death if I stay. Final update, I am the wife of a corn addict, and it destroyed me. It's been just over two years since I first learned of my husband's addiction. It's hard to read my initial post, man, was I in a deep dark hole. That hole only grew, too, and I saw some pretty dark times in the months to come. For those who offered kind words, sympathy, offered advice, and reached out. Thank you. For those of you who did the opposite, all I can say is, I hope and I pray that you never have to experience what I have the last two years. Over the last two years, I have been dealt many disclosures and admissions, each one worse than the last. What I thought was a pornography and masturbation addiction, turned out to be far worse. I can say this has been the most humbling experience, and I've learned that unless you are in someone's place, you really have no idea of what you would do, regardless of what you think you would do. It's also been humiliating, degrading, tormenting, and isolating in ways that are unimaginable. Some will say I'm weak for staying as long as I have, but they are wrong. It takes great strength to wake up every day and face the same demons, and determination and grit to slay them every single day. Some days I wanted to die, other days I wanted to run. Yet, every day I chose to keep fighting, until I no longer felt like dying or running. For those of you who are struggling with this addiction, if there is anything I hope to gain out of all we've been through, all I have endured, it is this. Pornography is a drug and a powerful one at that. It lures you in with the promise of pleasure and excitement, and when it is done with you, then what? You are alone, sitting in a dark room with nothing but the lights of a computer screen as a companion. Alone, standing in a bathroom with your phone in your hand as your lover. Alone, laid back on your sofa, staring at a frozen television screen after your video has ended. Alone, then the shame comes. The shame of once again giving in to this temptation. The shame that you couldn't stop yourself yet again. The shame of your secret and that you chose fantasy over your partner, the one person who's there every day to support you, to love you, to live a life with, yet you seek sexual release behind his slasher back, knowing they deserve better, knowing this is wrong. But it doesn't end there. No. Pornography is not done with you yet. Erectile dysfunction. Viewing pornography that is progressively hardcore, or material you never dreamed you would view, or worst case scenario. Illegal pornography, and I promise you, it will happen. Like any drug, you build a tolerance. Then, when fantasy isn't enough, you physically start acting out. Cheating. Public masturbation. Stalking. Window peeping. The list goes on. Will corn be there to keep you warm at night? Will corn wrap its comforting arms around you when you are grieving a loss? Will corn give you a family to fill your home with warm memories? Will corn build a life with you? Or would you rather look back and think about all the times you masturbated while your wife slept? Or how you'd rather miss your kid's school concert so you can have time alone to get off? You are the one missing out. This isn't a life. You are at the mercy of pornography and the price you pay is far more than you realize. You aren't just hurting yourself, you're hurting those you say you love. I can promise you, your partner isn't going to angry. They're going to be hurt that you would rather turn to fantasy than to them and they deserve better. You deserve better, for anyone who's interested in knowing. I'm alive and well, although if I were honest, I didn't know if I would be. My husband's addiction had many layers, has many layers, and everything that was safe to me, had been violated in one way or another, and I no longer had safety. I had nowhere to go, no one to talk to, because if anyone knew what my life was, 
I would be ostracized. My kids would have been ostracized. I had far more to lose than just a marriage. After feeling about as low as anyone could, I decided to have cosmetic surgery. For me, and I feel amazing about myself again. I also went back to school to get my master's degree, with a plan to specialize in sexual addictions. I'm one and a half years in, with one and a half years left. All A's thus far. Maybe I'll open my own practice. Maybe I'll move. Who knows? What I do know is that I'm not limited. Do I still have days that are rough? Absolutely. But I fight. Every damn day, I fight back. I love myself. I love who I have become. And I have had to pay dearly for the person I am today. My last disclosure was five months ago, when I learned my husband was using his job to get entrance into women's homes and use their personal items for his pleasure. My advice to anyone. Get cameras installed. He also went window peeping on the night of my birthday, six months ago. The next month, my husband entered treatment. Am I still married? Yes, but with very strong boundaries. I made him disclose his actions to his employer. He is no longer allowed to work alone, period. I have a tracking app so that I can make sure he's not frequenting public places to act out. He has an app that monitors his screen activity so that he cannot access pornography. He does not use credit cards so that he cannot purchase anything without me knowing. These were the conditions I made clear to him if we were to stay married, or he could leave at any time. He chose to stay. After inpatient treatment 1,000 miles away and $25,000 later, he recognizes now how ill he was, and he will always be an addict, and he never wants to go back to that place again. He is willing to do what he knows he needs to do to stop that from happening. He has little self-control, and he has told me and his therapist that I have saved his life and he is forever grateful that even with the boundaries, I stood by him, and I fought for something far greater than just our marriage. Are the boundaries too much? Maybe, but he's welcome to leave any time. I am not concerned with protecting the addict, but I will protect him, myself, and society to the best of my abilities. To conclude this post, I would like to say that pornography is not what you think it is. Many of these people in pornography are victims of sex trafficking, childhood sexual abuse, prostitution, and forced into this life with drugs, manipulation, abuse, fear tactics, and many others. It is a business that supports the continuation of all of these things, and I encourage you to please check out the Fight the New Drug site, link below. If you are not part of the solution to combat this, then you are part of the problem, and as long as you support pornography, you are supporting the continuation of abuse of thousands of children, women, and men. Good luck to you all and I wish you the best in this powerful struggle.